watching No to Nine. Hello, and welcome to Notes 9. I'm David Leedy. Episode 100, X Pages, Modernize Yourself. A tool is only as good as the person using it. Okay, so this is, uh, I guess, the big one. A hundred shows have come and gone for the Notes 9 uh, podcast. Uh, Marky has been bugging me on doing something really big for this show, and I quite honestly couldn't think of anything cool to do. So I thought I would do one of my sessions from Lotus Sphere. Um, I did a... Uh, uh, and the solo tr- as a solo person, I did one with Kathy Brown and, and another one by myself. So this is going to be the by myself one, and hopefully we'll do the joint one together. Um, but what I'm going to do is basically my Lotus Sphere session. So if you weren't there, um, you have this one, I guess. Um, so it was BP202 for Best Practices Track uh, 202. Um, and it's X Pages Development Modernize Yourself. And I'm Dave Leedy from Notes 9, but you probably already know that. Um, every session has like the intro slide of like who the person is. You probably know all this stuff about me. Hopefully, you know about the cheat sheet. Um, hopefully, you know about index.notes9.com, which is right now, uh, it kind of stinks, especially if you're using IE. Uh, so try not to use IE because there's a problem with that. Um, but that's the best way to find the older videos right now. And I'm I'm still actively working on some improvements, and I'm talking to a, a great developer who might have some time to help me. So, okay, so this is a different kind of session for me uh, from from a, a Lotus Sphere standpoint. And Lotus Sphere and IBM Connect, I, I use them interchangeably. Um, but as always, though, my goal is to just try to establish a comfort zone with, with the learning process of X pages. I, I don't do, you know, the really fancy stuff. Uh, and all that. I, I let that to others because, quite honestly, I don't know all that stuff myself. So, what, what we're going to talk about today is, is a couple different things um, for X page development. Now, normally, if you've seen my screencast, which I'm sure you have, uh, I like to try to focus on one thing and, and, and dig deep into it and show you how to do that. And IBM said that, well, I couldn't do that. I had to talk about, you know, some more. Uh, more things at once, uh, that the audience has higher expectations uh, from a Lotus for a session. And I said, well, the audience doesn't have higher expectations if they've ever seen my show, which was probably much funnier as a joke live than it is on the screencast. Um, but this is a best practices session, and, and the good news is everything I'm going to talk about in this show um, is, is there's no theory here. Everything comes from what I did previously and what I know others have done. Um, so it's real-world stuff from, from life. Uh, the bad news is I'm kind of a boring person, so uh, hopefully this show won't put you to sleep. Uh, we're not going to... We're going to talk about a lot of stuff before we get to any kind of code examples um, and, and things like that. So, okay, so where did this session come from? Well, I was inspired by this session, uh, you know, many months ago when I saw this on the X Pages forum. Something like I changed the code around a little bit. Um, but someone tried to run this in X Pages. And if you look at this uh, carefully, there's there's a couple different DB columns to the same view. There's at elements. There's an at four uh, being used. There is no at four in X Pages. I don't think there's an at do in X Pages. And while you can do an at if in X Pages, since server side JavaScript contains an if statement, I'm not really sure why you'd want to do an at if, um, etc. So the, the whole point of this is that the, the person who tried this code was a client developer or maybe a Domino web developer, and they're trying to move to X Pages, but they haven't change their thinking because X pages is different than client development and web development. So so the first thing you need to do if you want to become a better X page developer, which if you're still watching at this point, I assume that's that's what you want to do. Um, the first thing you need to do is reevaluate your thought process because X pages is different. It's not like anything you've done in notes before. Um, so if, if we look at this, X pages developer is not the same as a notes client developer. They're not the same as a notes web developer. Um, an X pages developer is an X pages developer. There's no other way to put it. So they do things differently. You have to, you've got some different tools. You've got to have, bring a different mindset uh, to the table. I mean, I loved developing for the rich client. 
but the rich client has limitations. The, the UI is very limiting. There's a lot of coding limitations there. You know, some places you can use add formulas, some places uh, load a script, um, but and they're not always interchangeable. There's data limitations on well, you can't do lookups and views and things like that. So to me, X Pages, which fixes a lot of those things, is more modern development. Okay, so let's look at this term, a modern developer. What is a modern developer? Well, to me, a modern developer uses standard languages that everyone else does. HTML, CSS, JavaScript, Java. They, they use them everywhere. It's not like you're forced to use, uh, you know, a formula in, 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 uh, in this area, and that's all you can use here. Um, modern developer also uses popular frameworks. There's a lot of code out there that's already been written for you. Um, so why not? use it you know to make your applications better and make your life easier so xpages already comes out with with a, the dojo framework out of the box and uh, i believe a 9.0 uh, the beta has uh, the dojo 1.8 in it i think it's 1.81 actually um and but you can use other things like jquery and twitter bootstrap uh the modern developer uses more common tools as well a little less frameworky i guess but but a little more specified or specific, like ITEX for creating PDFs or Apache Poi for you know uh, Excel and Word files and things like that. Uh, they use something like source control, real source control that the same source control that .NET developers might use or Ace for Hundred programmers might use, uh, etc. And they use modern communities. It's no longer about going to Notes.net you know the 6.5 forum or the 7.1 forum or the 8.5 forum or whatever those different forums are it's about being a a a fish and getting out of your your small pond and getting into the ocean and and working with other people and seeing these other communities out there that that aren't really note specific um so and the last thing is a modern developer always wants to keep learning always wants to learn new things you know you don't want to just stop at there's no destination here or there's there's no final destination there's there's just the journey from from one place to another so you want to keep moving forward okay so i like this quote and this is actually better than ibm connect because i i probably would not have been allowed to use that picture so i had that in after the fact um for 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 the fun of it so but I, I do like the quote so you must unlearn what you have learned so we, we did a lot of things in the notes client um, you probably did a lot of things in domino web development I never really got into that too much myself and some of the things we can keep some of the things we can remember but a lot of the hacks and a lot of the ways of doing things we have to forget about and we have to start over and see the new ways of doing it so how do we do that oh crap well, that's a bad slide because of the star but okay so we'll get there um, so you have to evaluate your design process um, so what does that mean you have to think before you code I mean a lot of times in the client world I get a spec or I know there's a need I can just sit down and just start coding you just rip it off well you can't really do that with X pages because there's more questions than ever before and these questions some of them at least need answers before you start so what kind of questions are there well there's a bunch you know what does the UI look like where is your data gonna live well heck in X pages you can move your source code around so where's your source code gonna live what's going to be accessing this application you know it's not just the notes client anymore it could be a web browser it could be a phone it could be an, uh, an ipad it could be xpink it could be just an api source you know so what's going to happen there um the, a great way to get started is to draw your app ahead of time um so so get a wireframing app you know so you can mock it up or or get crayons and, and a piece of paper like uh chris blatnick a, a great speaker at lotus for used to expound on um to to basically just draw your app because it's a lot easier to change it if you're just drawing with with you know your a uh, drawing program or or um, crayons than it is to after you've decided to start coding. Um, now there's a great website called balsamic.com which is, is a nice wireframing uh, website and if you're a blogger, and we're talking about blogging later, but if you're a blogger or someone who shares with the community they still have on their website that what they call a do-gooder clause. So you can get a free, at least you could, you can send them an email and in theory you can get a free license to their software if you give back to the community. We're going to talk about that later on. Now I did this a couple years ago and I have a free license to the desktop version of Balsamic which I use and I was very thankful that they gave that to me. Okay so we're talking about this modernization but we have to talk about why you want to modernize. Why why learn something new? Why change your ways? Um, because 
quite honestly, because you have to. Because if, if you're not modernizing, if you're not trying to improve yourself, if you're not trying to improve your processes, then you're by definition, you're kind of stagnant, aren't you? And, and this isn't a good industry to be stagnant in. The other thing is that expectations have never been higher. You know, why why is BlackBerry, and I know they just came out with a new phone, which I haven't seen, but, but BlackBerry has been getting killed in the market. Why have they been getting killed? Because expectations were higher than what they were were giving out you know it wasn't just about security anymore it wasn't about that killer feature it was about you know the web browser it was about the app uh, you know ecosystem you know so that the users demanded more things than they have been able to provide and so expectation they they need to modernize to meet with these other expectations that their competitors have put on them so if you're not thinking about improving yourself then you're stagnant and that's that's a bad thing okay so let's put it in another way in, in the old world the notes client world you had four major tools formulas lotus script javascript java in the x pages world you have more major tools html css two flavors of, of javascript uh something called expression language and java and then you could still kind of use that formulas and lotus script there um so um what, what does this mean it's 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 just like you've got more things to work with so you, you're not you know your hands aren't tied to only work with those those first four and even java what do, what could you do that in in, in in client development agents who did that no one did that because that's the only place you could use it in x pages you can use java everywhere so so it's a much bigger argument to make to use java now and to, to go to java because you can use it to bring back just a, a field in a form you can use it to to create a save action uh, where you couldn't do that before not only do you have different tools but your data modeling is different so in, in client development you had a form you had a document and this even was classic web development so you're only ever really working with one document at a time on your screen right maybe you got a little fancy with it and you had a form and a couple sub forms on there but they're all pointing to that same document well you can do the same thing in X pages, right? You can have an X page and a custom control and other custom control as being basically being pieces of it, all pointed to the same document. Or you can have an X page that points to three documents in a Java bean. Or view, you know, throw a view in or a P control or something like that in there. So your the way you work with data is is much different, and your capabilities are are much uh, greater than they ever were before. You could even do something like this, where you've got an X page and different custom controls, and they're all pointed to different data sources. And I'm not just saying I recommend that, uh, but you can do that. And, and maybe there are situations where you need to do that. So couldn't do that before, so you got to change your thinking. Not only is your data different, but your source code is different. So now, rather than having source, if you want to break up your data into employees, customers, and orders, um, you can have a whole other NSF file that has nothing but your source code, and you just bind to these different databases. And that's really the best way to do it if you're using multiple databases, um, so you can best take advantage of your different scoped variables and stuff like that. Um, so there's a lot of reasons to want to modernize. Okay, well, how do you modernize? Well, I mean... That's not easy. I, trust me, it's taken me years to get to this point, and I've got a long way to go. Um, back in 2009, when XPages came out, we had we had so little resources out there. But today, we've got a lot of resources out there. We've got websites. We've got XPages.info. We've got books or so. But the, the key thing, the first thing you need to do if you want to really learn XPages and improve is create a project. This doesn't have to be a project for OpenNTF, but it's just a project for you. And what you're looking for is just something small with low pressure. Because if, if, you, if you start an XPages project and you're, you're starting with, uh, you know, some business need that has a deadline and and now you don't know how to do you know some of the little things because you, you haven't gone through through it yet it's going to be frustrating i mean quite honestly it's you know the, the the small projects are frustrating i mean there's a lot of frustration in learning new technology that's just the way it is um so your best chance i think and the best practice is to start with a small little project that you're working on just getting it to work and not worrying about it being pretty um and and you can just try things out that you think you might need at some point and make them fit your project so there's two ways to do that one way is to make a project like a to-do list or a bug tracker or or a beer manager or something like that um 
so it's actually a, like a little mini application. Or you could do something like I've done on xpagescheatsheet.com and just make a, 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 a database just to hold, you know, just random examples and stuff like that. So, you know, just so you're starting to store these things. So whichever direction you want to go, start small, you know, baby steps, little bite-sized pieces, and you're going to have a much greater chance for success. Well, how do you learn? You know, to do all this stuff, we got to research, and it's so much better than it ever was before. And, and when X Pages came out, um, so what do we have? We've got you know the internet. Enough said there. Uh, but specifically on the internet, we've got X Pages info and OpenNTF.org. Uh, OpenNTF is great um, because of all the X Pages material they have out there. They've got custom controls. They've got full blown apps. Uh, but don't miss X snippets. They're little bite sized just snippets of code. And that's probably your best way to learn and start digesting these small chunks. Uh, Julian Buss from, uh, I believe, is in Germany, has XPagesWiki.com. That is, that is a do not miss resource because it's bite sized chunks. Uh, basically, it's all the tips and tricks that Julian learned as he was learning X Pages, I, I believe. Um, the X Pages demo app, if you're using the extension library or. or uh, update pack. They just released a new one, uh, an open NTF, a, a, a week or two ago, I believe it is. There's the Domino Designer Wiki, um, and of course, I've got you know 27 hours of video on Notes and Nine, which hopefully is somewhat helpful. And then there's cheat sheets and stuff like that. So there's a lot of resources out there. Um, use them. You know, take some time to read them. Uh, outside of X pages, because we're now playing in, in this bigger ocean, you know, you have to be able to learn about HTML and this other stuff. So I like to go to W3 schools. Um, I like to monitor dzone.com just to kind of keep up with things. And dzone has this uh, portion of their site called Ref Cards, which are basic, basically cheat sheets. You know, you can sign up for dzone and, and download CSS cheat sheets and JavaScript and jQuery. And, you know, there's hundreds and hundreds of cheat sheets. Uh, out there, I believe. So you, you don't want to miss that. Uh, I also like SmashingMagazine.com. That's a neat site. It's again, it's kind of like just random articles or so, but they commission like a lot of like free icons and and graphics and stuff like that. That and some of them are, uh, or a lot of them are even free for commercial use. You know, they're just free. Here, have it. Um, so I like to monitor that and kind of collect those uh, when I can. Uh, for Java, I've mentioned this on the show before, but uh, I like you know to just learn that start learning the Java syntax, how to program with Java.com. Uh, that's a, a guy from uh, Canada who who has these really well done blog articles, and he has his own very reasonably priced ebook that's that's affordable and and just makes sense to me. It's not a lot of of uh, technical babble and stuff like that, so uh, you might want to check that out. Stack Overflow, I can't highlight Stack Overflow enough because that's where um, you know you can go not to just get X pages questions answered I think we, we broke a thousand um, but also CSS JavaScript jQuery you know you name it um, so so sign up for there or sign up through Facebook or whatever and and start checking that that site out it's it's invaluable uh, dojo has its own website for dojo stuff and getting back into the X pages world we've got a couple really good paid resources X pages 101 tlcc.com I'm sure any uh or at least many of the past contributors of Notes 9 will be interested in talking to you if you're interested in that. And there's even other people out there as well. Okay, so you want to expand your tools. Um, so it's not just about HTML, the, the language or so, but but there's tools that, that, that you want to use uh, for all these modern applications, tools that you've never had access to before in, in the Notes client world or so, or never needed before. Um, so what are the important tools? Well, the biggest one, you know, it's get that X Pages debug toolbar from Mark Lusink. And and it's not just me saying this. His name was mentioned in, I think, every X Pages session I was at in at IBM Connect or so. This tool is phenomenal. It's invaluable. Uh, you want to have it. Um, I've done shows on it. He's come on Notes and 9 to talk about it. He, he has, uh, I think, significantly upgraded since then. I'd love to get him back on. Uh, there's this OpenNTF custom control installer, which makes it easier to get into your applications. Though I don't think that custom control installer works on an NTF, the template file. I think it only works on an NSF still. I, I mentioned that to... Um, uh, some people and hopefully it'll get fixed but if not you know and, and you know how to fix it maybe you can contribute that back because i think it really needs to get into an ntf file uh the x pages log reader uh i think it's the the, the guy who wrote it uh, I'm, I'm not even gonna try his last name i think jacob is his first name um but his last name 
is, is not going to work out well for me. Um, but that is a great application. It gives you easier access to, you know, the log files that are buried on your server. We run this on production. It's just a notes database. You know, it's it's not going to hurt your server. Um, it just it just exposes them. You can't delete it. I mean, talk to your admin or do it. Put it on while he's on vacation. Um, but it, it's it's invaluable to have that as well. Uh, we now have a We've had a Java debugger. We now have an S uh, server-side JavaScript debugger. I, I saw some demos on that on Connect. I'm hoping to do more shows on that in the future. Learn how to use it. The information is out there. Dan O'Connor did do a show on 99, um, the, the last last show, I guess, technically, um, even though it was a while ago, showing the, the server-side JavaScript debugger. Learn how to use it. Uh, the XPages toolbox, this, I've not done this yet. I, I really should. This kind of can show you how you know how fast your code is performing where the bottlenecks are uh so that's from philip riand uh and and that's on open ntf as well um again we've talked about some design frameworks you know pick one and and use it you know if if, if you want to use dojo for as much as you can great if you want a little more eye candy and and, and get it some comfort zone with jquery great um twitter bootstrap looks like a wonderful framework they're using it on collaboration today dot info i know uh, i used to talk about blueprint css a lot i think that's kind of uh, dead or dying um in favor of things like twitter bootstrap so that that is the one to if you want to pick one i think that's the one to focus on for a css uh, and framework with some javascript uh, eye candy as well uh, they use jquery for that but there's also other tools out there like you like color pickers to help you pick colors and and not just to pick a single color but you can pick one there's sites out there that you can pick one color and it gives you complementary colors um you know so you have a whole palette to work with there's registry or regular expression builders out there uh, a couple weeks ago i almost uh, okay that i probably shouldn't say what I, the analogy i was about to say i almost fell off my chair let's let's use that one when i found a css uh, table builder i was really excited because i have, I have a lot of trouble uh, trying to not style tables nicely uh so i found the css table builder out there which really kind of helped me uh, get going in, in that area a little bit and that's uh, i was i was excited so okay anyway moving on uh, source control it's been on the show before it's going to be on the show again use it even if you're a solo developer it's not about checking in and checking out. It's about controlling your source and keeping keeping all that history there. And what that history does, it lets you to revert back at any t place in time. So if you screw something up, and you're going to screw something up, we all do, or Domino Designer is going to crap out on you when you least expect it, because it does that just to see if you're paying attention, uh, you, you're, you're protected. It's better than local history. Uh, so every time you commit it, you know, you've got a record of it. But here's the beauty of it. The beauty is in branching, right? So let's say you deploy an application. 1.0 application is out, and the users are having it. It's in production. They're happy as clams. You start working on 1.5. Well, before you start, make a branch. This is the 1.5 branch. So now you're doing all this new code, and it's not ready yet. It's kind of working, but it's not It's not there to go in production. And someone calls you about a bug with 1.0. Well, crap, how do you fix that? Do you go into production and fix on a production? Because you, you can't use your template now because you've got all this 1.5 code that's not ready to go in. Well, that's what branching does. So in the source control, you can switch back to that 1.0 branch, and it moves that code around in, in your in your template. So now it's, it's basically just your 1.0. And then you can fix that bug, you know, put it in production, and then switch back to that 1.5 branch, and then it puts all that code back in your template. So it's it's a beautiful thing. Uh, so you want to you want to start using that. Um, there's different types of source control. I like Mercury because that's what uh, Declan taught me, and that's what we use at the day job, and it, and it works for us. A lot of people like Git. Um, I use Bitbucket uh, for my personal projects, Bitbucket.org, because it's free, and uh, they had this little drop-down list of languages, and I asked them to add X pages, and they did in 20 minutes. So now I'm pretty loyal to them. So, uh, but find a place to put your your source your source code now you don't actually have to use a um 
you know, a website like eGit or GitHub or, or Bitbucket, so you can keep it all locally. But it's just kind of nice seeing it on the web and seeing X pages go on the web and, and having it there. And plus, if you want to share with somebody, then, then you really need to. Um, so we've got videos at Notes 9 on that. Uh, but also watch Declan Lynch's blog um, because uh, there, is, there have been some updates that I've not videoed yet uh, on how to install Mercury. It has changed. So he's at qtzar.com. And he basically invented teaching the Domino community how to use source control. Okay, this is the most important part of, of this whole session, uh, I, I think. And, and this is joining the conversation. See, this conversation is going on all around you. There's XPages developers all over the world. You know what they're doing? They're talking to each other. They're asking questions. They're answering questions. So you can choose to either be in that conversation and learn from it and benefit from it, or you can choose not to and be in an island and, and have all this stuff go around you and, and not take part of it. Okay, so where is this happening? Well, there's the X pages form. Um, there's questions and answers going on there. Uh, I know Paul Calhoun, who's who's a great X pages uh, speaker and and talent and and notes to nine alumni. He monitors that very closely, as does some other guys. Um, Stack Overflow is probably monitored even a little more actively uh, from a bigger group of people. So so I believe I said over a thousand questions. I I think have been asked with a high percentage have answers on Stack Overflow. Why not use that resource if you get stuck? What, what, what do you do? You know, if you've got a specific question, go to Stack Overflow or the XPages forum, break it down into the smallest part as possible so that that will maximize your chances of getting help um, and then paste it as clear as you can, put as much information as you can and, and you're, you're going to have a great chance of getting some kind of answer. Okay. Um, if you have more of a more of a, less of a, of a specific question, more of a how should I go about doing this? How should I go about doing that? X Pages Forum probably beats Stack Overflow for that. Stack Overflow really likes specific tech questions um, that are highly focused. X Pages Forum is a discussion forum, so you can do whatever you want in there. Um, but it's not just about asking your questions. Answer what you can, even if you're not sure. You can say, hey. I'm not sure, but what about this? Have you thought about this? Get into the conversation. Your name will appear on every post. People will learn your name. It's only going to help you. Okay. The next thing you can, the best thing you can do is blog. Okay. Create your own blog. It's not that hard. There are free blogs out there, uh, but it, it doesn't take a lot of money and a lot of effort to, to get your own domain and, and to get your own blog. You have more to contribute than what you think. Okay, you're doing stuff that other people haven't done. I don't care how basic of an X page developer you are. You're working on stuff that I've not done. Um, and and when you're blogging, it doesn't need to be perfect. Okay, just get something out there, and and people will discuss it. You know, join this conversation. If you absolutely positively don't want to have a blog, post a tip on the X pages forum or in the wiki. I was just talking to him. Uh, a great guy named Dan Soros uh, the other day, he sent me an email about, about a question uh, that he was having with a view control. And, and I, I gave him some advice, and I met him at uh, IBM Connect in Lowesphere several times. And, and again, he's a great guy. And so he asked me this question on how to um, basically show HTML inside a view control. And I, I didn't know because I, I hate view controls. I think they're the devil. Um, but... I, I gave him some advice, which which may or may not have helped, and then he went back and and he figured it out, and then he said, "Dave, I, I figured it out," and I said, "Great, post it somewhere. You know, give that back. You know, you figured something else out." So what did he do? He went to the X Pages forum, he posted a tip, and now it's out there for hopefully someone else to find. Uh, Mark Roden, uh, Marky. Uh, we call him. Uh, he he's a great guy, and and he's a first time speaker at Lotus Fair. Last year at Lotus Fair, he got in front of in front of everybody, Guru Palooza, and basically said, "Why should he come back? What what should he do?" Because he wasn't in the community, he wasn't in the conversation really last year. But when he came home from IBM Connect, he got into that conversation, and and he joined the community, and he got involved, and what, well, let's see what happened to him. He became a speaker at Lugs. Uh, he's had two sessions at IBM Connect. Um, he got a, a new job, which he's pretty excited about, uh, so that's kind of worked out fairly well for him, uh, joining this community, and, and he's learned a lot, and he's given a lot back. 
too. I mean, he's done a lot of it, some videos for me for Notes 9, and he has a lot of demos on Zomino, uh, X omino.com on how to use jQuery and he's probably the foremost X pages jQuery expert uh, we have out there and what has he done all the only difference he's done really is he's joined this community I can't recommend this enough this is how you learn X pages so if you don't want to blog right away comment on other people's blogs you know there's there's hundreds of bloggers out there now you know leave some feedback say hey thanks for your post I learned something or what about this? You know, throw an idea out there. Don't be afraid. You want to get off the bench. And once you start getting off the bench, you might make a friend. Okay, right? So so you might have somebody that, that you know, contacts you, says, hey, I liked your idea. W what you want to try to do, and again, this kind of part is a little more for the people who are sitting on the session, is try to make friends with expatriates. You know, you've got common interests. And then you can send an email to them and say, hey, what are you working on you know have you done anything new lately or here's what i'm doing have you tried anything like this you know i talk to a uh, mark uh mark hughes every now and then we just check in with each other what, what do you you know he does a lot of mobile stuff i do some mobile stuff you know we just check in on each other and, and now he's you know he's a good friend um so the people is the most valuable resource of the XPages community. I know I sound like I'm preaching here, but this is this is it. This is the best practice. It's to talk to people. You know, join Skype. Get on Bleed Yellow with the same time communities or the Greenhouse same time communities. There is XPagers there. Now, don't just ping them out of the blue and say, hey, help me with my problem or so, but start start commenting on blogs. You know, I, I put out all these shows on Notes of Nine, and, and, you know, I don't often get comments. You know, I... I, I post on iTunes. I don't think I've gotten a single review on iTunes. I'm not sure. Um, uh, not last time I looked or so. But, you know, people don't want to have comments for comments. That's not the point. It's the point is to join the conversation and, and have a discussion there. Have a discussion on the forum, um, etc. It's, it's about the people. That's as simple as I can break it down. But I know what you're thinking. I know right now, as you sit here watching this screencast, what you're thinking. You don't have time to blog. Or what you had to blog about is too easy and no one cares. You're thinking it. Admit it. You know you are. Or you're thinking it's been blogged before, right? You know, you know, Mark Hughes blogged about this, so now he owns this topic, and I have nothing to add to that. Or you're going to say, I don't have a blog, and I've got no place to post anything. I just don't have time to build a blog, let alone time to blog. Or if you haven't, if I haven't hit you with one of these first four items, You've got this one. I am not an expert. I might be doing it wrong. Admit it. You're thinking one of these five things. I know you are. Okay, so let's talk about this. Number one, I don't have time to blog. Okay? What company doesn't like documentation? Right? So you figure something out. Write it down. Companies like that, you know, people follow. You know, it's knowledge transfer. Half of the notes and nines I do is more about me creating it or creating the, the, the show just so I remember how to do it later on when I know I'm going to forget. So it's self-documentation. This is too easy. No one cares. That's, that's, a, that's a common one I hear. If it took you five minutes to figure something out, it's going to take me 10 minutes. It's going to take Mark Hughes 15 minutes to figure that out. That's just how it works. Okay, so so share that information, help somebody. Okay, it's it's it, it's 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 that simple. There is nothing that is too easy. It doesn't exist. That's the whole one of the whole points of notes of nine is there is no such thing as too easy. It's been blogged about before. Number three, it's been blogged about before. Mark Hughes has, and I know I'm picking on him a little bit here, but Mark Hughes has blogged about a lot of things in the mobile world or so. He has. That doesn't mean I can't blog about it or do a show on it. It doesn't mean you can't blog about it and do a show on it. Out of the entire Internet that, that maybe Google has indexed, you know, 70% or whatever it is, the entire Internet, if I want to find that article, that topic that I don't even know exists out there, are my chances going to be better with just Mark's blog or are they going to be better if Mark and somebody else blogs about it? So now there's two. You know, the more blogs there are, the more postings there are about a topic, the better chances are someone's actually going to find it and learn from it. Okay, I mean, I, I, and people forget things too. So, so 
so if it's been blogged about before, blog about it again. It'd be nice to link back to the original source. You know, that's up to you. But they don't own that post. They they posted it out there to get it out there to the community. Okay, so so don't be afraid of just redoing a post that somebody else has made in your own voice. Again, don't steal, you know, the content, rewrite it, give it your own voice, tell, you know, add your style to it and people will learn from it. You know, some people don't like my videos, right? Because they they want it written down. Okay, you know, so you can take a topic that I did on a video and and you know, write it up. You know, just link back to the video would be nice. And and, and now we've got we've we've doubled that posting out there it went from one to two okay you don't have a blog you've got no place to post anything well look at dan source you know he doesn't have a blog but he went to the x pages forum and he posted a tip out there i tweeted that tip and at least one person said hey that, that's a good write-up that's a good that's a good article you know and it was a good article so so you can get it out there you can get your own blog if you don't you've got the x pages forum you can go to the download designer wiki um you can send it to me or another blogger, you know, write it up, you know, or talk to us ahead of time. We would probably post it for you, you know, giving you your name and, and your credit or so and, and getting your name out there in the community. So that's not an excuse. This number five is the best one. I'm not an expert. I might be doing it wrong. You're right. You're right. You might post something that is wrong. How are you going to learn the right way? How are you going to learn to fix it unless you post the wrong way and someone comments on and says, hey, there's a better way to do that. That's uh, I'm not a big fan of all this social technology out there because I haven't figured it out, but that's true social learning. Okay, that's the only buzzword I'm going to use today. So, so who cares if it's wrong? If it's wrong, someone will tell you. I mean, I've posted stuff out that's been wrong before. Look at the show I did on on the memory management, your kit or so. I did this whole show on it, and then Nathan Freeman tells me basically everything I thought about was wrong. Uh, not 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 badly or so, but now I've learned from that. Uh, back in the day when we had the X Pages blog, uh, one of the bloggers, you know, we had six or seven people who would try to blog on, on xpagesblog.com and one of the bloggers did something on custom controls and it was just it was this kind of interesting way of trying to get data to the custom control and he was wrong and what happened is he totally missed the fact that custom controls can have custom properties you can pass those properties in you know at, at design at design time okay so he he didn't he had no idea that was there so he posted this this article which Quite honestly, was was wrong uh, because there was a better way to do that. And what happened? Someone commented, "Hey, there's a better way to do that." And here, he's an expert, and he was at the time, and he is today. He learned how to do custom properties from that, and then he kind of redid that article a little bit, or, or did a follow-up article if I remember right, or so. So it doesn't matter if you're not an expert. That's how you learn. Okay. In case. Uh, English is a second language to you, or I rambled on too much. Here's the cheat sheet of of the your excuses and why your excuses suck. Okay, so there is no excuse. Join the, if you want to learn next pages. Join the conversation. It's it's that easy. Okay, so that is hopefully the end of my preaching segment for for this show. Uh, I know that was long and I was very nervous when I presented this session, uh, but uh, no one threw anything at me, so I was pretty happy about that. So let's let's now talk about the languages of X Pages. Okay, the first and foremost language is a language that we, we kind of love and know from the notes client world is at formulas, and IBM did a great job of creating X Pages version of common at formulas. But that does not mean you need to use them, right? I mean, just because they're there doesn't mean you have to use them, right? So they've given us dbcom, and they've div given us dblookup, and, and my dbcom should have parentheses after it, so sorry about that. Um, but here's some problems with it. Well, if you if you, if db column or dblookup returns back one value, that value comes back as a string. If it returns multiple values, it returns an array. That's convenient, IBM. Not really. They couldn't have returned an array with just one value in it. One value in it? No, I I, I don't know why. But that's that's dumb and it's painful to deal with, um, because if you don't trap for that and, and handle it rightly, correctly, you're you're gonna crash. Um, it has a 64k limit in 2013. We've got something with a 64k limit. All right, that goes back to Bill Gates's memory management comment, I guess. Uh, sometimes they're slow. 
uh, DB Column and DB Lookup are not the fastest things out there. Uh, and they're very difficult to error trap. You know, I mean, if DB Column fails, why did it fail? Did it fail because you syntactically wrote it wrong, or did it fail because you forgot to sort the first column in the view? So just because they're there doesn't mean you have to use them. And they're not always the same as the original version. Like I always say, at unique. You know, if you do an at unique in X pages, returns one type of value, which is ugly. And if you do the old school once with a session evaluate, it returns the old value that like DLEY dash whatever that that you're used to. And compute with form. And I've I've had some debates with with a couple guys on this um, on how to use it or so. I don't like it. I don't think you should use it. Quite honestly, I don't think you should put code, even though it's convenient. I don't think you should put code on the form. You know, I'm not talking. To, I'm talking about like add formulas and computing different fields or so. I think it's spreading the, the logic out. I think it's 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 more difficult to maintain than than it's worth. Um, now I'm I'm a, kind of assuming uh, Jesse had a good point of well, what if something was done in the notes client? So I'm kind of assuming you're in, in an all X pages world here. Um, but I, I just think it's it's a bad habit. I think it's old thinking or so. Maybe you can make a case for it to you know convert fields like into readers fields or so, but you know, there, there's other ways to do that in service in in X pages too, with either Java Beans or server side JavaScript. So, so I'm just not really wrong to do. I think it's just a bad habit, and I think you're better than that, and you can strive to be better than that. Um, but again, that's just my personal opinion, which I usually try not to give because no one cares. Um, so, what's the next language? Server side JavaScript. This is the language of choice for the beginner, Barn. This is the Lotus script of X pages. If you want to use X pages, leave Lotus Script behind and move over to server side JavaScript as much as possible. Um, it's it's based it's not really JavaScript, it's based on ECMAScript. Okay, and in the source it looks like this. It's in the little curly brackets with the JavaScript prefix, and then now you're writing JavaScript. Uh, though of course we have editors and stuff like that or so. But it's nice that it's ECMAScript and not true JavaScript because that means we can do more with it. So we have access to the, the full domino object model. Just be aware that the Domino object model is the Java version of the object model. It's not the low script version. The Java version, you got to recycle crap. Uh, especially if you have a for loop or a while loop or or whatever loops you have in JavaScript or so. If you're working without Domino objects, you got to be thinking of recycling those objects. Um, there's other pure Java objects that you can use in server side JavaScript. I use hash maps and tree maps all the time. And so do you. That's what a scoped variable is. Session scope variable is a hash map. That's all it is. Uh, manage beans. We're going to talk about that a little bit in the show, and I'm going to talk about this in future shows. Manage beans is is you can have a, a bean and access that through server side JavaScript. So so you can have all your logic in your bean if you want, and then just have like you know these little entry points to get and set through server side JavaScript if you wish. And of course, you still can use add formulas. Uh, but be careful here because server-side JavaScript does not compile to Java, right? So, so let's step back a second. X Pages is based on uh, uh, JSF, right? Java Server Faces is what it's called. So, so everything for your page turns into like a Java object, right? But your your server-side JavaScript does not get compiled into Java. It's 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 a string. Basically, that it interprets at runtime, so that means uh, a couple things. One, you really should add, and no one ever does because it, you don't need to, but you really should add the semicolon at the end of each line of server-side JavaScript. That helps the compiler um, parse, you know, parse these things out. Um, but it's slow. It's a little slower than it could be if you're just dealing with Java, because it has to interpret this at like each HTTP request. That's like each HTTP request. I, I I don't believe that means every time you hit the submit button. I believe that means you know there's a, like a seven stage life cycle, right? Of different response things and stuff like that, which which I, I don't know, but other smarter people talk about. It might some of those it has to interpret six times for each submit, right? Because that's the life cycle thing. So it's doing a lot of work there. It's it's for as fast as as it does seem to be in a lot of X pages world it's it does a lot so that's a problem with server-side JavaScript There's, it's just more expensive to process um, and the last thing I'll say here is is you don't want to stop learning with server-side JavaScript that is not your destination 
Okay, it's it's just it's just your waypoint. So this is what you use first. This becomes your bread and butter to begin with, but you don't want to stop here like we all did it with Lotus Script. The n the next language and what you want to get to is Java. You know, and I said it before. You know, for years and years and years, IBM said, "Learn Java, learn Java, learn Java," and we held up our uh, certain finger and said, "Yeah, that's not going to happen." Uh, well, that's the, that's the world's changed. Uh, IBM wins, and and we have to kind of toe the line in the X Pages world and get on board. Not because they want us to do it, because it's a better place for us to be. And, and it's it's more valuable to us than it ever was before. So in Xpages, we can do Java beans. You know, and I, I did a show on this a little while ago, but a bean is a Java object. I call them managed and unmanaged. And the only difference between the, three, between the two of them is uh, I think it's like four lines of XML in, in you know, the, your face's config, something like that or so, where a managed bean is an object that, that the Xpages server I'll call it will just create for you when needed you don't have to instantiate it or if you want to go that extra mile and instantiate it yourself uh, you can do that too and put in whatever scope you want um, so it's it's kind of a choice uh, but what what is it what is it you can make a custom object kind of like a Lotus script custom class but it can span pages you know you can make a Lotus script custom class on a on a company form and you can put a lot of business logic in there and you can reuse that in an agents but if you're using that in your UI in this company form and, and you now you close a company form and you go somewhere else or so that's all gone it only lives for the life of, of that form well the Java beans you can put them in any scope you want of which you know we have we have view scope and session scope and even application scope so a good use for Java beans is also you know to you know replace the need for a profile document you know in, in some cases to have database settings and stuff like that but all your logic can be in one place and it really can speed up your coding and improve your quality um, it's a good editor um, the syntax is not that difficult and it's it's just a nice place to live and work um, so this is your Again, I don't think there's ever one real destination, but but if, in in learning programming and, and being a technologist, I guess. But this is the X Pages destination. X Pages is Java. It's Java server faces. You can code in Java. It's faster than server side JavaScript. It's really easy to get started. I fought it tooth and nail, and once I got started, I'm like, oh God, this isn't that hard. Um, so why not? Okay, another language we have in here is expression language. Expression language is this language where um, you're already using it, right? It's it's you know when you bind to a document field, if you look at it in the source, it looks you know document one dot first name. That's expression language. It, it can be recalculated on on the refresh of a document or only on the page load. So some things you you only need to recalculate once, um, maybe like combo box lookups and stuff like that, and that'll save you a lot of time. Um, you can use them for view scope variables, but what it's the real key is when you mix this in with Java beans so you can have a Java bean for a company name for a company and have a method get name set name so you can read the name you can set the name okay if you bind your your edit box to the um, to the method with expression language you just have to say you know company bean dot name Okay, then if you're in edit mode, it'll know to use the setter. And if you're in get, if you're in read mode, it'll know to use the getter. So there's a lot less coding to do. You just not like you have to have a field for editable and a, you know, and a second field for read only and, and stuff like that that we may have had to do in the notes client sometimes. Um, so that's expression language. There's there, there's nothing that hard to it. Um, the only downside of it um, is you can't easily that that I can determine uh, pass parameters. Uh, there's a way to do it with a map hack, and I think um, I think Tim Tripconi told me there there is a way to do it, but I forget if we finished that conversation or if I was drunk. Um, uh, I'm not sure, but I don't think right now there's an easy way to pass parameters. If if you know of a better way to do that, then uh, fill out a comment. Okay, custom languages in there. You've probably seen this, and it's scary because I don't know what it is, and I don't speak custom. I speak English, uh, but all custom uh, language is is it allows you to mix and match all of them. So if we look at this little code snippet on here, the first person in, that's just a literal. Okay, so in that custom language block, you can just type the first person in, and then you can add some JavaScript, 
and you can add you know some expression language and a space is a literal so when you use expression language and use custom language the um it's um a lot faster than just parsing all that parsing that server side javascript has to do so you do get some performance benefits you know as it can be dramatically faster you know probably not on a small app but you know if you're doing a bigger one you know every little bit helps Okay, let's actually look at some code. I know I'm rambling long here, um, but let, let's say we have this thing here, Paul Calhoun, and we want to, you know, extract that number from from this string, Paul Calhoun parentheses one two three four five, and parentheses. Okay, I want to just look at some different languages because we don't want to fear moving to new languages. So in, in traditional classic formula, we might have done something like this: result equals at middle. You know the the, the variable, you know, key, and then in the middle between those two parentheses, right? The fairly simple. I assume it works. I'm not sure if I ever tested that. Um, in Lotus Script, we might do something like this. You know, we uh, this is a function, and we can get the, the position of the beginning parentheses and the position of the end parentheses and kind of figure out what, what the difference is and then use, you know, the mid function. Okay? That's not that hard. In server-side JavaScript, Okay, I mean we can. There's a string. A string is kind of like a um, an object, and it has uh, methods. Uh, one of them is index of, so we can get the count um, of the first parentheses and the count of the end parentheses, and and you return a substring from there. So they're just built-in methods. So going from formula to Lotus script to server-side JavaScript is really not that easy. You just have to, you know, the, the syntax is, is somewhat similar, and you just have to learn some of these new objects, which is just not that hard. So let's not be afraid of server-side JavaScript. Just look at it again. Um, if we want to update a document in Lotus Script, we've all done this code, right? You know, and and God, dim session has new notes session. I mean, I'm so I was so tired of typing that stuff all the time. Okay, and we have an if statement here uh, to set, you know, to get your if we don't have a document, then we find the document, or we we create it, I guess. Then we set some fields, and then we save it. Well, server-side JavaScript looks remarkably similar. Why? Because you're dealing with the same domino object model that you already know. One of the key differences is we don't need to do anything to get sessions. Session is already given to us. If you're working with a current database, the local database of your code, that's already there for you. If you're working with a foreign database, like I'm in this example in the in the get database, then, then you got to get, get it like you would today. And then here's just a simple if-then statement, not unlike the Lotus script code. The only difference here is, okay, just, I mean, dates are never easy to work with. It's a little more painful in uh, any language, probably. So here we have to just do this, create a date, you know, today to do a set now. That's that's not that big a deal. Um, and then we can return the document. And, uh, yeah, so it's my doc, or if the new, new doc if it's a new doc, and my doc if it's an existing document. So that's a very similar code construct from that Lotus script that we saw. Here's a Lotus script select case, you know, and a select case action, case, you know, delete, case close, case waiting, case else. And here is the JavaScript equivalent of case. They call it switch. The, the key difference here is at the end of each case block, you need to have a break. Otherwise, it will go down to other cases for some reason. I haven't figured that out. And then they have the, the one case is called default, you know, at the bottom. So that didn't need a break because I was at the end. Um, so again, if if you're ta doing a lot with Lotus Script, it behooves you to start converting that code and, and converting your thinking into server-side JavaScript, and don't rely on at functions as much. Don't rely on on calling Lotus Script. Okay, it's just better for you. Uh, custom class, if you've ever done this, all all custom class in Lotus Script is is it's basically you're wrapping functions inside a a class statement, and you've got internal methods. Okay, so in this case here, I've got first name, last name, document. You know, I do some stuff on new when I pass a document in functions or so. So hopefully you've gotten to that. I, mean, I love custom classes in Lotus Script. Don't get me wrong, but I love managed beans better. This is the same thing. It looks the same thing. Basically, we're creating a public class person. And then public void load document doc. You know we're not going. I'm not going to get two in a, each line here or so. But it's doing the exact same thing as that Lotus script did basically. Now, there's a couple syntactical differences and stuff like that, but that's that's about it. Well, the nice thing about this is the setters and getters. This uh, Eclipse can generate those for you. 
you know, without you even having to type them in, which you can't do in Lotus Script. Um, so that, that saves time. So here's just the end of that, uh, where I also have the save function in uh, to actually save the document. Because when you're working with Java objects and Java beans or so, you, you really don't want to work with the notes documents uh, except when you're going to disk. So you want to read everything in that you need, then discard it. You keep the, the, those data values inside the Java object. Then when you go to save and manipulate them however you want, then when you go to save it, get a hold of your document again, and then save it that way. Um, and so there is to it. Okay, this is a very ugly slide, um, and but my arrows got missed when I reformatted this for my show compared to the small projector at Lotusphere. Um, when I'm, we're about to look at some code here, and hopefully we'll we'll get to this. I know this is already a long running show as it is. So just um, what 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 this slide is is just more of a reminder for me than anything else is is I'm doing some stuff with Java objects now. For example, state, city, and person. So if I load a state, and the, and I've got all these people uh, that are that live in this state. When I load this state, what I can do is I can go through each person and load them into a map. So I have now the members or the residents of that state. While I'm loading that person in, I'm creating a person object to hold that person's details, right? So so I've got a state object that contains people objects. You know, the people person object might have first name, last name, you know, whatever it is. But I can also create a city object okay this is almost kind of like a little relational database in a way but but so so as I load a state I am creating p people objects and I'm inspecting the person and depending on their city if it's a new city or so I create a city object um, at the same time and then that person object that I created can also live in the city. So what that gives me is a list of all the residents for a state and all the residents of a city. And what's really nice about Java is because I've created a person object, um, even though that per that person object is accessible and living in the state object, and in a city object, there's only one person object. And the state and city just have pointers to that person object. And hopefully we'll see that in inside the code there. Okay, so, um, God, I, I know that, that ran really long, but let's look at some code, and, and hopefully you're even still watching. Finally, we're going to get some code. Uh, first, I want to show you where the code is going to be if you want to download this and, um, and and check this out yourself. So, this is the website that I'm using for xpagescheatsheet.com right now. Uh, I also call it in or cheatsheet.notes9.com as I try to consolidate. And uh, this is just a temporary lo lo local server that I'm using. So... This is my kitchen sink application. Like I have a lot of demos, even the missing one that I broke. Um, but this application itself, this website, it, with all these demos, is downloadable right here. Okay, click here to, to download it. And um, now it's not updated yet with what I'm about to show you, but it will be. So at some point in the future, it's going to be 1.5 or 2.0, whatever I'm going to call it. And you can download this, and it'll have all this Java code in, and you can play with this to your heart's content. Uh, there also has the fake names. Uh, is available uh, from this website as well as the cheat sheets. So, oops, not yet. So if we click on some demos, let's look at some good stuff here. Hopefully good stuff. And thanks for sticking with me this long. Okay, so at Unique, I said that they're different, and I just wanted to prove that I'm not fibbing. So this is the new one, which is this really weird random string. Um, oh, I like that dope one there. Um, and then this is the old style, okay? This is timestamp based. This is basically, I think, just a random number. There's, there's no rhyme or reason to this. Uh, so I wish it was, were a timestamp stamp. I don't know what the odds are of hitting this again, uh, but I don't like it. Um, I think they're greater than than this, but I, I really don't know. Um, at DB columns. So just I wanted to show you a couple at DB columns. There's nothing special here. Uh, this is not DB column array, or not at. It's just DB column array, uh, which is a snippet from OpenNTF, which we'll look at. And that works fine. Uh, this is more of the same. Uh, I have an access control problem where people are junking up my database. Um, but this is cool. Here, I, I didn't know this. Uh, I was working on this on the plane on the way down. And this says infinity. So this is a, a DB column that's pulling, trying to pull back more than 64K. And I thought I was going to say nothing. But this this is actually helpful. So, gosh, I, I, you can imagine my surprise when I saw it. So that's this is kind of cool. So, yay, IBM. And then... Let's look at this multi-results one. This is a, another 
um, combo box. And if I pull up a state, notice that the first name is being filled in, a sentence is being formed here, and I've got the first name again over here. And what's happening here is this is basically just view scope variables. This is custom language where I'm combining some different things, and this is actually Java beans. So, so these edit uh, these controls are bound to the Java bean. And what I can do is I can put an edit mode. I can um, ed edit it, and I can save it, and I can go back to read only mode. And to prove to you that that actually did save, I can go to another state, and I think it was Colorado, and I can come back, and it did save, and I can uh, clean up my mess. Okay, so let's look and see how all that stuff works. Okay, so if we go into designer, I'm say yes. So the new at unique, nothing special here, at unique, right? Putting in a view scope variable, and then this control is bound to that view scope variable. Same thing over here, except what I'm doing to get the old style is you have to wrap it in session evaluate. Okay, you don't need the parentheses here because again, it's the old style at unique, and that works, you know, just as well. A lot of people use use units, I think, for like shared keys and stuff like that. I never liked units. I like at unique, so that's what I do. Uh, I'm weird. Okay, at db column, nothing special about db column. If you've stuck with the video this far, I'm sure you know how to how to do that. But just to review, it's just not db column, but it wants you know the, the location to be an array for whatever reason. So you basically need to create an array and pass and you know the get the server name you want and get the names of the um, the database that you're pulling from and then there's your view name nothing special there over here though this is a little different this is using DB column array which gives us some advanced options we can cache this lookup so it's available later um, and we don't have to look up the disk again we can determine whether it's unique we can sort it etc so how does that work well that code comes from uh, a guy named Tom, and uh, gosh, I'm, I'm forgetting his last name. I think it's Steenbergen, so, Tom Steenberger, something like that. I'm sorry, Tom, if you ever watch this. Um, uh, it just escapes me at the moment. And if we come down here, this came from OpenNTF. So this is really good code. So what he's done, he's taken on that DBCom, and he's really enhanced it with some additional features, like the caching, uh, which is going on here. Um, and... And, and you know he's he has some sorting and some unique capability but what what you have to keep in mind though is this still uses at db columns so it's still um as susceptible to the 64k limitation uh, i believe that this gets rid of the um the risk of bringing one variable with a string so i think that's in here too so the, so again this is really good code but if you're if you might hit 64k limit that will hit it uh, there's nothing special here. If we look at all names, this was the one that that did, you know, showed that infinity. So it did hit that limit. And again, that's just a, there's nothing, I didn't do anything special there to get that there. So that just up, appeared. Over here, this multi-results one, if we look at this, I wanted to make sure we got around the 64K limit. So I didn't use a DB column. I looked it up myself. So I just use the domino object in the model. And the only th kind of thing special here is I had to create a vector. So a Java util vector. That's a Java object that you can use in session scope or that's a server scope, server side JavaScript. Sorry about that. It's late. And um, I, I create this array. And then as I walk through my view navigator, which is there's nothing special there, I'm adding to this vector my, my value basically, which in this case is the get column values, first element, and I'm converting it to string. And then I you have to recycle because it's Java, and you're working with domino objects. Whenever you have a while or a for loop and you're working with Java, domino objects, that's really when you need to recycle them. Okay, so let's move on from there. So now, as I change this value, right, we, we had these things updating live. So how does that work? Well, if you think, let's go to the events. And if you think back to uh, that first snippet that inspired this whole session, that that person did several DB columns to the same view, one on one line and a second call to the same view in the second line. So uh, that's kind of silly when you have the ability to return multiple values. So you could look it up once and return multiple values. So that's what get first person does. This is a function that I pass in the state um, that's from the 
view scope. So I pass in that state key. And if we look at that, and I probably should have just left this open. So this is get first person. Nothing special about this. I'm just doing a, you know, get all entries by key. Um, I'm getting the first entry because I'm just getting the first person. Where What I wanted to show you here is, is this line right here, where I'm actually creating an object in JavaScript. You create it with, you know, var result equals and then the curly bra brackets. And uh, you can just set methods or properties, I guess you could call it. It's kind of like a type statement in LotusScript. So first result dot first name. I can, you know, get my document. I can, you know, get entry, get item value string, etc. for last name. And then I can even put in the, the notes document itself to pass the actual notes document back and forth. So I'm able to return three values from one function. And if we look at that... And then that's what I do. Is so once it comes back into this multi-result, oh, 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 that should be var. I'm surprised that even worked well. Um, so you want to have, always have vars before your your variables. It will ruin your day. Um, so then I, I take the view scope and I put into view scope the first name and I put in the view scope the last name. And we'll come back to the rest in a little bit. So what what is that? Well, that's all these two feel fields are they're bound to view scope right view scope first name view scope last name but what are these really check this out this is expression language so you're already using expression language so if we did expression language here that's what it looks like okay so it's very fast there's no extra server-side JavaScript parsing going on there okay and that's and I'm just doing a refresh that's how this is being updated. Now, custom language, if we look at this thing here, this is that custom language, and, and I don't know if I can expand this this well, but this is just basically you can combine string literals with JavaScript. So this is actually a JavaScript call to get the name of the state. You know, I'm just using JavaScript to get the view scope. Get I could have used expression language here just as easily. Um, and then here is the actual expression language. But all these spaces are literals and stuff like that. So this is a, this is a really fast way um, to to present your data on the screen because you avoid all that server side JavaScript parsing. Okay. Now here's the cool part. Here's here's where it starts getting cool. If we come back up here in the events, notice this last line: person load, and then I pass in a notes document. Okay. Well, what's person? Person is a managed being. It's Java. If we come down here to Java, and let's expand this, you know, it's just like that Lotus Script uh, class I had in the slide, uh, for the most part. So it's, you know, I've got some private stuff here. I've got edit mode, which we'll see in a minute, the first name, last name. So load, we pass the document in, and I'm just reading the stuff into the object. And then when I'm done with the document, I get rid of it. I, I recycle it because I don't want to hold on to that. And then when I want to get the data back, there's a getter and a setter. And I didn't write those. Uh, I'm going off script here. But if you can go into source, this, oh, this is my favorite part of the day, quite honestly. And I say generate getters and setters. And the first name needs to be done. So I can say both of them. And I can say OK. And they're there. It's, it's just so nice. I wish you could do that in Lotus Script. Um, and then I want to show you this, this edit mode, I have a, a, f a function here to set the edit mode. So I can pass in a Boolean, to, true or false, to set the edit mode. I have the ability, I, I don't really use this, but I could toggle the edit mode if I wanted to build a toggle button, etc. And then it returns, you know, and then I can get the edit mode after I set it. Okay, so we're going to, I'm foreshadowing here, That's we're going to see how that works. So if we look at this Java bean here, um, here's the first name, and let me come back down here. I think I forgot to demo this, so let's just go back here for a second. Um, did I demo this? Yeah, I, I guess I did demo this, so uh, never mind. Okay, so we've got this edit control here and what is it bound to the bean itself person 
okay and it's bound to the first name method and the the last name works uh, the exact same way if we click on this person and last name and because we're using expression language if it's in edit mode it uses it can use a setter and if it's in get mode it uses the getter well where does person even come from how does a managed bean work well in nine which is so nice under application configuration you can go right in X XSP no I'm sorry you can go right into faces config see I'm still getting used to it and it's right here this is what makes it work it's just it's just it's just there it instantiates it's for you And that's all there is to that. In 853, you got to go into um, uh, the Package Explorer and drill down under Web Content, Web Int, and then find it here. It's, it's the exact same thing. Okay, so move to 9. 9 is just easier. Okay, so, so that's how we're reading it. But now we're, we're toggling edit modes and we're saving it. So check this out. So we've got this panel. And in this panel, I can. There's a read-only property that says person dot edit mode. So it's bringing back the edit mode. So if it's an edit mode, true or false, it'll bring back true or false. Now I actually want the reverse of it. So if it's an edit mode um, is true, I want to compute read-only so to false, right? Because it's not read-only. So so what reverses that is the the exclamation mark in the the beginning of that. Okay, so that's comes back there. And then what happens is because this table and these, these controls are inside this panel, it in, these inherit the panel's value here for the read-only and stuff. So there's nothing else to do, you know, to change these from read-only to, um, to editable. So I don't need to have two controls in there. It, it's, it's just inherits. It's great. So to, to set it to read-only... I have an event here, and this is actually server-side JavaScript because I'm passing in a parameter. I'm not quite sure the, the, how how that would work in expression language yet. Um, so I just set it to false, and then it then I do a refresh, and, and then it's done. And to set that in mode, I just set it to true, and it's done. It's that easy. It's it's a lot of functionality for not a lot of code. And the save button, all that does is call person dot save, and what does that do? I get something else I should have left open, I guess. So if we look at person.save, uh, basically I have to re-get the notes document. Okay, so I get uh, the, the, here I have to manually get the session. I get the current database. Then I can do, once I get the database, I can do get document by unit. I already had the unit. I stored the unit when we loaded it okay so then I had it for later so that's very easy to do and then once I and it's very fast so once I get that um, then I replace some item values and I do save and I probably should have done a, a recycle here too because I touched this that would have been a best practice so I should probably update that but I'm not going to do that live and that's how this works and, and, and it's great okay so moving on a little bit so demo 2 Okay, what's going on here? So I've got these two data tables, and I can pick a state, and I can basically have a little repeat action going here, and I'm also counting up the number of cities in each state. So let's go back to Pennsylvania, where I live. Um, God, we have a lot of cities. Who, who goes there? To Pennsylvania, my gosh. Okay, so let's see how that works. And I'm going to save that. Okay, so when we have this state, then I, there's a state object. Same thing. And this isn't right. I don't know why this even works, actually. I saw this in the other one. I just fixed it. This should be vscope.get. That's weird. I, I'm just surprised that even worked. Um, because that's what this is bound to, right? So this is bound to view scope and then it's I like to prefix these things because that, that hosed me once uh, when I didn't so view scope server side JavaScript state okay so it has the same lookup that that we that we saw before with that uh, 
object model code rather than the DB column. And then in the events, when I choose one, I take a state object and I, I load it and I pass in that uh, the state that we're in. So if we look at the state object, I know this is like the longest notes of nine ever, and I do apologize for it, but you, we're this far into it, we might as well just keep going. So if in the state object, I load, when we pass that um, two-digit abbreviation in, I call this populate function. It's not really a function, it's more like a subroutine because it's void. And it's, you know, you can probably follow this along pretty well, is I get my view, and and, I, and I'm i going to walk this, you know, get first entry, so then there's probably a get next entry uh, business and stuff in here. But what's, what's kind of interesting is as I walk it, I'm creating new person objects as well. You already saw the person object in the last demo. So I create a person object, and then I'm going to load that person object to, to populate it, and then I'm going to put that person object into this people list, which is part of state. And people list is a map, okay, with a string key and then the person object. So as I instantiate this state and load it, I'm loading all my people, okay, and and the people are, are just objects that I'm keeping a count, so I know how the count is, and then I'm going to create a city so I've got this city list and what's what's in the city list is is city objects so I've got state city and people objects this is very powerful for reporting I'm, I'm sure this is confusing and there will be more notes and nines and stuff on this uh, concept but so what I'm doing is as I'm going through each person you know I'm not gonna look at the people twice I'm only gonna look at them once I'm only looping through once so I take the person and then once I had the person object, I get that person's city, and I convert it to uppercase. And what I want to do is I want to create a map of all those cities. So, so here, here that is, and I, I get, I pull in that city from the map. And if that city doesn't exist, then I have to create it. So if it's not null, or if it if it's not null, then I just have to add, add this. And and temp city has a person where I'm now adding that person back into the city. Okay, so I think I just confused myself in that. But what I'm doing here with the city list is, is a, a map of city objects. And if it's, if it's already in the map, I just need to add the person. So I get the, the city object, which has an add person method, and then I add that person. So this person exists in in this state object, which is the, the object that I'm in, see this is state, and it's going to exist in the city, but there's only one object, so this only gets a pointer in memory, so Java is very smart about that. So it makes it kind of efficient to do something like this, you're not doubling up your objects and, and wasting memory. And if the city, if we hit a person where we the city is not in the map, then I've got to add it to the map, okay, and that's all this code does. Okay, and then I just loop through there, and, and I get keep a count of city count of how many cities we have. So if we look at this cities, which is the count of cities, that's coming from state city count. So there's a method in here that just returns this integer of the count of number of cities. And that is basically it for for that. So I use that property. Then for these data um, data tables, these are like repeat controls, right? So I got to return values to repeat. Well, that's easy. I bring back get people values. Well, what is get people values? Uh, right here it is. So I return back my map, and I'm just saying, just just give me the values from that map. I just want the values. I don't need the key value pair. Just bring me back the values, and I'll repeat over that. So then to access that, now this is a service. This is how you would do it in server-side JavaScript. Okay, row data, which is, was my collection name, uh, which I probably should have shown, uh, but I'm sure you'll trust me at this point. And get first name, and then get city, okay? down here in the expression language version of this table same thing this is just but this is expression language so it's 
you can see it here state.peoplevalues and then in here I'm using expression language again I believe yep so row data last name row data first name and I, I bet you know that'd be a good show at some point is to make this editable you know put a button on here and just make this row editable and see if I can figure that out how to do that and stuff like that so that is just showing trying to show you the difference between using you know you can use server-side JavaScript you can use expression language uh, in this case but it's really powerful is is to use these Java beans and objects and stuff like that and and that makes your your X page coding itself a lot easier you know I don't have to write any code to make this repeat work okay that's the key here okay well, there's one more demo but I think I'm gonna bail on it because this show has run way over time uh, even for me um, yeah we'll, we'll do that one this is a little more advanced so we'll do that one later so okay th there you have it and 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 that's your demo so uh dear god thanks for sticking with me for that i, I hope that wasn't totally confusing um my plan is to kind of break that up uh, to focus on some of those con uh, concepts a little more in depth and shorter shows uh here's a summary for um you know this show for the most part in the session and uh and that's pretty much it. So I thank you for your time.